what's the senator's uh, position on legacy costs? On your current legacy costs? Yeah. Well, I think he's. I think he's been pretty clear on his, at least his public statements have been that. And I'm talking about what's been given to him by the companies themselves. He said that the, when you talk about competitive rates, he's saying you're being paid too much. I mean, he's he's referencing the fig, facts and figures that have been given to him by the companies, and that is they're not they're not operating at a competitive level, which means whether it's salary costs or hourly wages or whether it's uh, health care or legacy costs. They cost more than the competition in the marketplace. And his point he's been making repeatedly throughout this process is, unless the companies are willing, all the parties, which includes you guys, includes the companies, includes the supply, includes everyone who's a part of this process, is willing to get up and sit on the table and say, we have to do more to get to that place. He doesn't think that a bailout is the future. He thinks that a bailout... They're not bailing up with they want to borrow think, money. He thinks, a difference. he thinks that the lending of the money will not be paid back be in no better shape six to eight months from now. <clears throat> well, let me just make, let me make a point here. When you're talking legacy costs, I retired from General Motors after, from General Motors after over 36 years. 36 years of working with a promise that when I retire, there'll be health care and a pension. General Motors has been here for, in this country for 100 years. And in those hundred years, you obviously accumulate a lot of retirements. And that's what, the, that's what your legacy cost is. Mm -hmm. And so, are you like suggesting that we just cut all these people loose, all these people? And do you know that we have GM retirees whose monthly pension is like under $300 because they retired so long ago? <clears throat> and they're like in their 80s? These are the kind of people you're talking about cutting off their lifelines. And that's what you need to be clear about and understand the dynamics that's going to take place if, if pensions are lost, health care is lost. And we really do feel that we need to have a national health care plan here in this country. South Africa and this country are the only two countries of the industrial nations of the world that don't have uh, to pay health care costs for their employees. Why? Because all these other countries, <coughs> Canada, France, Germany, England, uh, Japan, they all have national health care. And uh, so that would be a big burden off American companies not having to pay health care. That would make them more competitive overnight. Okay, without trying to tackle the national health care problem, two points. One is Senator Shelby sees his responsibility as one, making sure this committee does the, does the requisite work they need to do before they make any decision. He's, he's argued that we haven't done that. He argues that we don't have the proper information or the expertise at this point in time to make this kind of decision. Do you have that any information can I just, about the Can I just finish? You can, you can jump in. Um, and two, as, as a steward of the taxpayer's dollars, because they come from all of us, he wants to make sure that whatever happens, it happens in a responsible way so that it can be repaid and have the effect it's said to have. He has concluded so far on both of those points we haven't done that. We haven't done the work we need to do to make sure we're doing it correctly, and he's <coughs> not convinced that this money will be paid back and it will have the effect that everyone's saying it's going to have. If right. it gets to the point where the information is, is sufficient enough <coughs> to lead him to that point, he may change his mind, but we're not there yet. What is his plan for reindustrializing this country and uh, creating more good paying jobs for the American worker? Well, I think you hear from Senator Shelby that his, his his emphasis has been, and I think for his entire career, on investment in innovation and being education. education and being competitive. That's been his mantra since I think he's been in college. Because, well, because people can have the jobs yeah. that you have. There's only select people that get them sitting in this building in Congress. The pension and people will survive. I couldn't live on Social Security. Social Security. Now, after working here for 30 years, I've lost 50% use of my right hand. I've got severe neck and back problems that keep me from being employed. Now, if they take my pension because this loan doesn't go through, where do I go, Walter? Well, I think, once again, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but Senator Shelby's argument is, is that he's not yet convinced that the loan money that's being pro uh, proposed, and currently what's being discussed, and we only have bits and pieces of the details, an even smaller amount of money is being discussed right now, 
for the purposes, I guess, of a short-term loan program to get through, I think, February up to February or something like that to the next administration, that, that it's sufficient in every respect from every player in, in, in the discussion to get us to the point where it'll not only be paid back, not, not, not only be paid back, because that's part of his responsibility for everybody else who puts in the money, because we all got to put in money, including you, including me, that'll, that'll work. And he hasn't concluded that it will work. Well, don't you want to hold on a second? <laughs> yeah, at this point in time, his position is that this is not going to work and that the money will not be paid back and we're going to be in the same situation we were in six months asking for more money because the required changes that need to be made, although significant changes have been made, and I grant you that, more changes need to be made than not. Being made. No, this, this, that's not the case. What's going to happen is, is, is the companies are going to go under. They're, these, all these jobs are going to be lost while he sits there and figures out if the money's going to be paid back. I didn't hear this when AIG is <coughs> auto workers in, in your state that I don't think the senator will be willing to bring to them, but prove me wrong, and that is that we would welcome them in the UAW. That'd be nice. We would welcome nice. them to join That'd the UAW. Great. Uh, without that, I don't think any auto workers anywhere in this country are going to be able to afford to buy cars. But uh, I say prove me wrong and have him bring that message from us to the auto workers in your state. We would welcome you to join the UAW. Can you say something? No, please. I think that the, uh, the workers' wages in your state are already going to be driven down. And uh, I don't know if he, Senator Shelby saw the article where Toyota makers um, already surpassed our income uh, on a weekly paycheck. Right. After they got their bonuses, was it last year or year sure. before last? Now, with the new contract that the automakers have made for the new people coming in, Toyota already had a memo that said we're going to match them, so uh, their wages are going down too, already. That's Race to I the have. bottom. That's competitive. Another issue too that we forget to bring up here is a very important uh, part of uh, Mr. Shelby's uh, outlook on this, his auto workers, that we have his jobs banks, things up. Uh, well, guess what? His own hometown state, or his own state, with all the foreign car manufacturers, they're the ones that invented jobs banks. And, I, and you can go on the internet and I, I'll, I'll even give you your email, I'll send you to the sites. It comes right on their own sites. They start a job as banks. They don't lay their people off because what the, what the uh, Japanese corporations <coughs> believe that the CEO is, is expendable. They don't throw him away like a piece of paper. They believe the workers are the most important person working for them. So what they do is, now that their, their sales are down 46, 47%, they're not laying their people off. The people are out in the community parks painting swing sets, building sandboxes, sweeping streets, working in hospitals. I agree with that. Let me let me say something on that. In in 1985. Oh, go ahead, sure. And, and they're making twenty eight dollars an hour to do it. So what's the difference between their their people, which he he says is okay for them <coughs> to, to have jobs, banks paying them twenty eight dollars an hour. Well, our, our people are in jobs, banks, even though they may not have to do any job community service, get paid at the same thing. You tell me what's the difference. Yeah. No, the people I know that were in jobs, they did community service. Well, I'm saying, saying, I'm, I'm saying, let me, let me, let me do a thought here. In 1985, when, they, when uh, Roger Smith started downsizing General Motors, and they, they were a cash-positive company, laying people off and, and getting closing up plants, my father's plant was closed. And uh, from 1985 till 1991, he was in the Jobs Bank. We lost cars and almost lost the house. And all that time, he was out doing community service, Meals on Wheels, or, you know, different uh, community programs. And that's what they had those people in the Jobs Bank doing, was delivering food to invalids that couldn't get their, their food. And then when the jobs opened up again in the 90s, they brought all those people in that were in the Jobs Bank, and they started putting them back into the... Uh, the industry so that they could start being productive and helping the company to, to you know flourish which it did all throughout the 90s and that was why it's important that we have the jobs bank to secure these jobs these people weren't making money they weren't making money like they were when they were working in the factories and if you would have asked any of them they would have said I would rather be in the factory working making the thousand dollars I can make with all the overtime accumulatively all week long Instead of the four, three, four hundred dollars, I will make setting in the jobs bank, doing charity work, 
You know what I'm saying? And, and they had to do the charity work or you didn't get the jobs made. 